My name is Alicia Frazier, and I'm a rising senior at Purdue University majoring in general communication and African American studies. Today, my speech is entitled The Miseducation of Black Students in America. So in high school, I was a pretty average student, but I started my senior year with a 2.66 and finished with a 2.85. It was this school year that I finally realized that it was important for me to get into college because I didn't have any other plans and the only other option was the workforce. I didn't want to stay in state, but it was cheaper, more accessible to my family, and Purdue Northwest is a good school nonetheless. However, I knew I wanted the normalcy of college as PNW is a primarily commuter campus, so I transferred to Purdue University in West Lafayette my sophomore year. With all things, there are ups and downs, but this year overall opened the floodgates to the problems within society and personally for most people across the country. 2020 was supposed to be the year. It's the start of a new decade, which should bring new opportunities and growth. I was gonna study abroad again with the Black Cultural Center, travel with my friends to research the Gullah Geechee culture in South Carolina and Georgia, and travel to visit potential graduate schools. And then Miss Corona hit. Many of my peers, including myself, were facing unemployment and a lot of students didn't get the chance to get a stimulus check. My hopes and dreams of walking across the stage in May 2021 to get my degree are shattered as all college students can relate to right now. Put that on top of the murder of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor and Sean Reed. It was as if the weight of the world was on my shoulders and I know thousands, if not millions of other people like me, black people felt the same. As companies, administrations, leaders and celebrities began to speak out against the heinous murders, one of which happened in my home state, true colors became more apparent. It feels as if the companies only feel like speaking up because they know the black dollar means something. It doesn't feel genuine. This led me to question my role as a citizen in the future. Do I, as a black woman, want to work for a company that doesn't value my life? How does my role as a student conflict with the true feelings of these hierarchical structures? African-Americans account for 13% of the US population. Of the total amount of African-Americans in the states, only 11.86% hold a four-year bachelor's degree. Black undergraduate students at predominantly white institutions, otherwise known as PWIs, comprise 87.1% of the overall black college student population of the US. The remaining 12.9% of black undergraduates are enrolled at historically black colleges and universities, also known as HBCUs. However, the volume of black students in PWIs are very small in individual institutions. Some examples are Indiana University Bloomington with 3.51%, Purdue University with 3.03%, the Ohio State University with 5.68%, and so on. In campuses that are all majority white, it becomes easy to doubt the worthiness of your space on that campus. It's like an inner battle that is reinforced by the microaggressions and racism that happen on campus. This is called imposter syndrome, where people doubt their accomplishments and fear being exposed as a fraud. Being immersed in an environment that historically was not meant to include you, as research shows, can negatively impact the success of students in many ways. Research also shows that even after segregation was ruled illegal, higher education institutions resisted the change, furthering the racial tensions that still exist on campuses today. On top of that, according to the American Council of Education, there are four factors that hinder the success of black students at PWIs. One, sense of belonging. Two, lack of preparedness due to K through 12 education. Three, large non-traditional population in the black community. And four, two thirds of black students do not finish college because of finances. It is no wonder that the graduation rate of black public institution students is 40% in comparison to the 62% rate of their white counterparts. Of the four factors, I'm gonna focus on a sense of belonging. The long history of racial prejudice has led to today's students feeling as if they don't belong. The build is named after racist predecessors, the intentional separation of black students from campus and other racially insensitive occurrences all built on the lack of sense of belonging that 
all students of color feel on campus. It's not only the white students who cause the negative effects of being at a PWI, but the presidents and higher ups at these institutions as well. Despite the fact that 45% of college presidents nationwide believe that racial relations are fair, the actions speak otherwise. Recently, the current president of Purdue University and former governor of Indiana, Mitch Daniels, referred to African-American scholars as one of the rarest creatures in the midst of the campus's unrest due to a P Puerto Rican student being discriminated against at the CVS pharmacy located on campus. Furthermore, another sector of the academic community are academic advisors and other student affair professionals. As someone who hopes to one day become an academic advisor, it frustrates me when I see advisors provide little to no support for their advisees. While I've had great advisors in both high school and college, I've learned plenty of horror stories that have led black students to distrust or avoid their advisors as much as possible. In fact, in a case study, it was found that advisors would recommend easier courses or for the students to change their major from a hard one like engineering to an easy one like communication. The only option we're left with is to create our own spaces from clubs to cultural centers. I knew when I went to college, I wanted to surround myself with people who looked like me. So I intentionally chose to spend most of my time in the black cultural center. Research shows that this is a conscious decision that many black students come to when immersed in a predominantly white space. If students cannot find these spaces, it can make their college experience harder. All of these instances can build onto the stress that reduces the likelihood of one graduating from a university, as well as decrease the mental and physical health of black students. For example, in a university in the southeastern region of the US, black students express that racism is a normal part of their college experience. A student from this particular university named Alexis stated, there are some people who are still so stuck in their ways who just don't like black people. It's just something you gotta deal with if you accept coming to a flagship university. Black people in general have always had to accept the reality of the world around them. As I mentioned in my article about my grandfather, which everyone should go check out on the mystery page. Personally, I've become accustomed to the injustices that occur on campus and in situations outside of my academic career. It's not surprising to me that hundreds of students on my campus have reported the microaggressions and racist experiences that happen to an Instagram at Black at Purdue. I'm not surprised by a student at my school posting a racist TikTok insinuating that he'll run over Black Lives Matter protesters. It took a lot of effort from Purdue students, alum, and allies to get the student in question expelled from the university. That alone sends the message that the target on black students is not an issue to administrators unless their reputation is on the line. Instead of waiting for the fire to ignite, it will be best for universities to listen to the concerns of students as they arise. Most of the systemic issues that universities face today could be considered a snowball effect of all of the issues that were swept under the rug for years. Moreover, hiring more black staff and faculty could improve the quality of education that black students and other students of color receive as well, as black student affair professionals only make up 12% of the field. A solution I will have for these institutions and the government is to put their money where their mouths are. Increase the funding in cultural centers and diversity and inclusion departments, as well as funding for HBCUs. At HBCUs, Black students do not feel the same pressures because of their race since Black people are the majority. This gives HBCU students a better experience socially, and according to research, Black students show a better intellectual adjustment at HBCUs rather than PWIs. However, HBCUs are still in need of more funding that should be allocated not only to STEM, but also the social sciences and the humanities as well. Following the pandemic, it is currently unimaginable what the government will continue to do to offset the damages done by the pandemic. There are also institutions facing external damages from natural disasters, such as Tennessee State. Where does all of this leave Black students in the United States? Confused, angry, sometimes complacent, and scared. If we don't work in a corporate setting, how will we become successful and live stably? 
Luckily, there's a growing gig economy thanks to recent technological advancements. But for students who do not know where to start, where would a degree take them? I personally cannot imagine where I'm going in the future. As like I said, the pandemic continues to shape and change our lives daily. More than that, I'm unsure of where I'm going because being black in America is knowing that you will face unfair treatment, unwarranted barriers and racism in any setting. It could be in the classroom, at the workplace, or even in the grocery store. While black students only represent a small portion of the overall college student population, their impacts on campus makes universities millions each year through sports, cultural events, and more. Black students of America, we're tired and we deserve more and better from these institutions. What would they be without us? Universities. Listen to your students of color's concern with open ears and hearts. It is time to address the racial problems that exist on campuses across the United States, as the problems of the past will not be solved until it's fully addressed. It's not only necessary to put black and brown people in higher education, but to advocate and reduce the barriers that exist so that students of color could have an equitable education. This could be done by implementing more initiatives with the student's interest at the heart of it. I don't have the solutions to everything, but my experiences along with research and other personal anecdotes show that there's a large issue that needs to be changed. Although the systems in place seemingly make it almost impossible to do so. The hope of the future, while it may seem dim, could actually be brighter than we think. Young students are advocating for their rights on campus and in the real world. I believe that my generation will be the change necessary for future generations. We might not see the efforts in this lifetime, but our actions now will benefit or disadvantage the successors of the universe of the society that we live in. Thank you.